Greetings, this is a first tutorial in using the ISC tool from Xilinx for developing schematics for the FPGA boards. First thing you've got to be able to do is to create a new project. So after having brought up the ISE tool from the menu, um, we'll go ahead and make a new project. Um, my screens are going to look a little bit different than yours depending on the version of Xilinx as well as the operating system that the ISE tool is running on. Uh, this is running under Windows, under a Mac, under VMware Fusion, so uh, some things may look a little sketchy. Um, the Linux version should look very much the same, uh, although there will be some subtle differences. Also, this is based under version 14.2 of the Xilinx tools. Uh, some things have changed over the years, um, but most of the recent versions should look pretty much the same and it shouldn't be too hard to sort out the differences between them. Xilinx organizes everything by project, so the first thing we need to do is to create a new project. My advice to you is to store them into some default location that is very easy to make backups, frequent backups of. Um, so we're going to go ahead and give this a name, and in this particular case we're going to call this um, test circuit. And before we jump straight into HDL encoding, we're going to use the schematic entry view, which is a very powerful way of developing logic diagrams. So, give this project a bit of a description. Make sure that the top level source type here is set for schematic. In this particular screen, we have the opportunity to choose the type of hardware that we're using. The board that we use here is very close to a Vertex 5 ML505 board, but it is not quite the same. Um, in particular, it has a different device type. So instead, we have got to manually select the properties for our XUPV5 board, which is a Vertex 5 based on the XC5VLX110T type. Um, the package is always FF1136 and the speed grade is 3. If you click on these, you'll see that Vertex or Xilinx has a very large range of product offerings and it is very important to make sure that you get the right selection here or the design you make may or may not be synthesizable. Down under here, you may choose your preferred values. For example, um, we'll be preferring to use Verilog later on in this course. And so you want to make sure that that is at Verilog rather than VHDL. So at this point now, we can go in and um, create some source file. And by creating the source file, we can do new source. And in the new source window that comes up, uh, we will want to choose schematic. Give the circuit a name. We can now hit finish. And when the screen comes up, we see that we have some options to choose from, um, which are all OK as they are presented. And instead, what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to place some circuits or some logic gates. So we click on the gate symbol and under categories, we can go down here to logic. And in this case, we want a two input AND gate and another two input AND gate and a single two input OR gate. And now we want to be able to connect these together. Oops, we'll add a wire from the end out of one of the AND gates to one of the inputs of the OR and vice versa. And at this point now we actually have circuit. The next thing we've got to do is connect it to input and output.
in the design view, we'll see the schematic and we can verify that this can be built. And so um, under implement design, I'm sorry, under synthesize, we will initiate just the generate uh, post synthesis simulation model which will cause the project to be built. And we see down here in the console window that the synthesis step is running um, and it's beginning to build the models that would be used to simulate this on our FPGA. We can see that for our selected device we could actually run this circuit at 5 nanoseconds for the path delay from input to output. Um, we can also now look at the RTL schematic and this is the high level view but we can actually zoom in and we can verify that the schematic actually looks like the schematic that we drew. Now this is showing us the equivalent schematic. Um, it is not showing us how this would be actually optimized for our board. Um, if we actually went all the way to implement the design, generate a program file, we would actually be able to see the assignment of each of these gates to the physical properties of the FPGA but that's not really the purpose for this very first demonstration.